I well, I have one chicken left. Oh, yeah. yeah, the rest died, but I have them for forever, and I've, you know, always owned like twenty fantail pigeons at one point. I had yeah ducks, chickens, yeah, bunch of stuff, doves. Yeah. Hey, I'm Orianthi and you're watching Feedback Loop by PRS Guitars. God, I was listening to T-Rex. <laughs> Man based on I was running today. Writing is just so much fun these days. Being in the studio, when you're in your creative zone and realm that you're in, um, I love experimenting with sounds and uh, then being on the stage is a completely different experience because when you get to play those new songs or feel the energy of the audience and you're just in that mode and everything and you just, I, you know, you just feel it because it's all about energy filled, it's all about, you know, getting carried away with the music and there's nothing like that playing live. So I'll say, yeah, kind of all of it, really. <laughs> God, I started um, strumming along to Elvis when I grew up, when I was like six years old, that was BB King. Then it was like the blues completely. Um, then it was Santana. So I don't know. I guess I always kind of go back to the blues and Santana kind of Latin rock. I don't know, actually. Um, actually, you know what? I haven't jammed with Buddy Guy. I've been in a rehearsal with him, but we never actually jammed together. So that would be cool. I love, I love cooking. Um, well, you know what? I kind of cook everything, really. I try to make hel healthy alternatives to bad things because everyone around me likes to eat really bad food. So I'm like, do I need a healthy turkey burger, make fries, healthy pizzas, um, stir fries, everything. Apparently I make really good sea bass. I haven't had any complaints about that. So yeah, it, there's a whole thing to it too. Oh, yeah. It's like I, I grill it and then I put it in the oven. It's this whole process and I'm very particular about it, so. <laughs> I mean, it's celebrating women in music, which, you know, I'm all for and, and encouraging more girls to play the guitar and everything. Um, I got an award ages ago there, which was really cool. I think it was the Inspiration Award or something like that. And uh, so every year they ask me to play it, it's always it's a fun thing. We, we honored um, Janis Joplin, um, I think it was this year. And it was so cool because her family was there and my dear friend, Vanessa Amorosi came up and sang, and it was like we sang for her brother and everyone, so it was really cool. Um, I would never forget getting on stage with Carlos when I was 18 in, in Adelaide, Australia, when I got up on stage with him and he invited me, because we were just jamming backstage, and um, I didn't think that I was getting up on stage or anything, and he's like, so follow me. And it was like 15,000 people out there, you know, and, and I kind of knew all these songs anyway because rehearsing to his records, wearing out the Sacred Fire video, VHS back then. <laughs> so I was like, you know, completely destroy the video from just pausing it, trying to learn Europa, Summer Party, all those songs, you know, like just note for note, every solo. Um, and then he's like, come and join me tonight. And I was like, oh my God. And that was the most nerve wracking, but insane experience to be on stage with him, same band, you know, same lineup as that, you know, video I'd rehearse to, well, try to, Practice too, and um, it was in, it was incredible. I'll never forget that moment, and uh, and then also playing with Michael Jackson too. Those two moments. Oh, all the time, yeah. Because I care. Mm. I think I think once you like don't have that, that means you don't really care. You know, um, you want to put in a good show for people. Um, you want to sort of take them away from reality. It's escapism, and that's your job. And so you want to create like really great music, you want the band to play great, you want to be in that realm and just do your best to carry it, you know. Um, usually standing, well, I actually just get into the room with my band and we all just kind of say something of the evening and just sort of you know, put our hands together and just, you know, do a chant. And, um, and I just like to sit alone for a minute, alone time, like 10 minutes to kind of meditate. It's really important to me. Mm. Light some incense sometimes and just sit there and just sort of reflect um, with my guitar sometimes, you know, alone, because it gets so crazy before shows sure. and people around, and then you just have that moment and then you can go out and, and do your thing. Well, 
we kind of have that big island mentality, you know, pretty laid back. And when we say no worries, we pretty much mean it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the drivers, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy people out there, I'm sure. <laughs> Different characters are coming in and out, you know. But it's always interesting to sort of people watch and just kind of like, and you kind of become immune to everything living in LA. Like anything could happen, and you just go, oh, okay, cool. Like it doesn't matter. Like you know, like a person dressed as Spider Man could jump out of the bushes, which happens a lot. <laughs> you say, like, okay, awesome, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Lose my last pick because I've I've lost most of my, I, I lose my picks all the time. So I've learned how to play, you know, without one and it's totally fine. Like, when you break a string, the guitar goes out of tune and then you're just kind of like, you know, it's annoying. <laughs> Hobbies, um, gosh, I, I've just gotten into painting actually, terribly, but I painted my cat the other day and I found it to be therapeutic for a minute and just um, painted some awful paintings actually some cobra with guitars and, and I, I just give them to my friends. They're just like awful gifts. I think I'd be fired from everything. So, <laughs> I don't know. I could take care of animals, but, you know, because I was thinking oh, I'd probably be a vet, but then I couldn't operate on them because that would just freak me out. Um, maybe I'd work at a zoo, like feeding animals, you know, the lions. <laughs> A tip? God, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. It's, it's horrible. Yeah, it's <laughs> That's what I can say. <laughs> Going to Australia, you have to kind of prepare yourself. Take a bunch of like those, you know, calming herbs I get uh, from, from actually Whole Foods or whatever. And I just try to go off into, you know, watch some movies, listen to music. I write lyrics a lot on, on the plane because I sort of feel like you're in this different zone. So I'm listening to my voice, ma my voice memos on my phone and I'm just like trying to write lyrics to like mumblings or, you know, finishing off lyrics. So I use that time to be creative sometimes if I'm not exhausted. Oh yeah, when I was on tour ages ago, um, you know, I'd buy, cause you get so delirious after a certain point, you get jet lag and you're just exhausted. So I would buy big stuffed animals. Like one was a, a huge alligator, right? And I bought it in Florida, but I kept it in my bunk as a pillow. So I had, because it was really comfortable, the body, right? But the tail would be sticking out. <laughs> so everyone in the van would like kind of bypass the freaking, it's the Alice Cooper van. Of course, it's Ari's bunk, you know, with the freaking alligator tail hanging out. And um, but it was really comfortable. You know, it, was, it, was kind of a, it was kind of a good purchase. I wouldn't say it was not, you know, it was impulsive, yeah. 